my morning to, to be a part of this. So thanks again for, for inviting me here. So my name is Taylor. Uh, I work for the US Forest Service uh, at the Rocky Mountain Region uh, Regional Office based here in Lakewood, Colorado. So the, for those of you who are less familiar with, um, with the Forest Service and kind of how it's structured, uh, the regional office is responsible for five states. So that is Colorado, Wyoming, South Dakota, Nebraska, and Kansas. And within those five states, we have 17 national forests and seven national grasslands uh, that we take care of. So working at the regional office is a lot about working at kind of this strategic level, um, allocating funding, kind of thinking of prioritization for projects, um, things of, excuse me, things of that nature. So uh, what I'm gonna be talking about today and demonstrating is a GIS tool that I developed um, for the regional office for a recreation group um, that's kind of helping to fold in a lot of different pieces of information uh, about, about that prioritization and helping folks try to kind of direct those funding decisions um, and folding in, especially a lot of that <clears throat> equity information, <clears throat> excuse me, and uh, economic information as well. I also have forgot to start my timer. So I'm gonna do that now. <laughs> so before I hop in also, uh, just a little bit of background about some of the important funding sources that I'm going to be talking about uh, that kind of drove the creation of this tool <clears throat> is the Great American Outdoors Act, which was signed in 2020 or GAOA. Uh, we love our acronyms. So that's one that I'll be dropping quite a bit. So GAOA, the Great American Outdoors Act, importantly uh, established funding for deferred maintenance uh, backlog for addressing that deferred maintenance backlog on infrastructure. So in the recreation world, especially that's things like campgrounds and picnic sites, uh, trailheads, um, roads and trails importantly, and the bridges um, that are on those roads and trails, basically any kind of built infrastructure that you can think of that the Forest Service or the other land management agencies uh, manage uh, and take care of. So, and that deferred maintenance backlog uh, might not be a term that you're familiar with, but basically it's, it's any kind of maintenance that we would normally do year to year uh, to keep up this infrastructure that we build and manage. But unfortunately, because of funding issues and also staff capacity issues, lack of staffing, just things that kind of build up year after year that don't get done, but that should be done. Um, so we have kind of a dollar value on that uh, maintenance information. So just some kind of context for all of you before I dive into this tool that I've created and what it actually does. So let's make sure that I can now share my screen. Let's go for this one. We use Teams in the Forest Service, so Zoom is not my native language. <laughs> but hopefully you should all be seeing uh, this tool. And so this is sort of just the introduction page for that tool um, as I continue to give you a little bit of context, but now at least you have a pretty picture to look at. So also we've got a, a cat cameo. It wouldn't be a Zoom without it, of course. So, you know, check off your bingo cards. So. Uh, the tool that I'm sharing right now uh, was originally requested by our regional director of recreation uh, in the regional office. And what he initially wanted was just a snapshot that kind of showed the state of recreation in our region. Um, and specifically in order to help allocate those GAOA funds. Um, so initially his ask really was kind of for an infographic. So he came to me with this request and we talked over it a bit and we decided that he really didn't want a, a static map, right? An infographic. What was really going to help him make those decisions and kind of get into the weeds and, and think about the things that he was doing and, and the prioritization that he was trying to create uh, was going to be, uh, it's cat time today, apparently, uh, was going to be um, uh, 
uh, an interactive ArcGIS Online based set of dashboards. So that is what I ended up creating for him. So let's dive in a little bit to show you guys what I'm talking about um, as this loads always the danger in a live demo. And I do want to mention that um, this tool is not unfortunately publicly available for viewing right now. Um, we, we do sometimes make our story maps and dashboards and things publicly available in the Forest Service, but it's, it's quite an arduous um, and very careful process to make those things available for everyone to kind of see and explore. And so for this particular tool, we haven't gone through that yet, but I am authorized to give it a demo. All of this data that I'm showing is publicly available. Um, we just haven't gone through having our external affairs folks proofread it and make sure that everything is, you know, messaging wise, well, what's going out to the public. So just an FYI, if you search for this on, on the internet or FGS online, you won't be able to find it, but I'm really happy to be able to demo it for everyone today. So the dashboard that we're looking at right now is um, the first of four dashboards that are part of this tool. And uh, this one focuses on just the recreation sites. And so you'll see that all of the information here is our, basically our authoritative forest service information, the data that we have on our forests, on our recreation sites, and, and this is data that we collect and maintain. So things like, again, that dollar value of deferred maintenance, which is very key kind of for that Great American Outdoors Act kind of source of funding um, and other information about those recreation sites. So in terms of, since I know that we're all here for, for maps and GIS, <laughs> um, the map that you're seeing here here is showing uh, the boundaries of region two. So again, those states that I mentioned earlier, and we're seeing the boundaries of the forests, uh, the national forests, and the heat map that you're seeing is just showing the locations of developed recreation sites on those forests. So the heat map doesn't have to do with use. Uh, that's a common sort of misconception. It's just where those recreation sites are more concentrated. Uh, and in addition to this information about those recreation sites um, in terms of accessibility, that deferred maintenance, um, we also have visitation information. So we collect information every year about who is visiting our sites, how many people are visiting our sites, uh, what they're doing there. So, um, you know, visitation by site type, whether that's day use or overnight or in a wilderness. Uh, also uh, for region two, obviously skiing is a large part of our visitation. So I also broke it out into non-skiing and downhill skiing visitation. Uh, some regions don't necessarily have that going on, but here, as you can see, it's a very large slice of the pie uh, in region two. So just to give another kind of quick zoom in about what this sort of does um, in terms of the tool, we can filter down to a single forest. So for, for this demonstration, I'll use the Arapaho and Roosevelt National Forest because since we're all generally in the front range area, I believe this is gonna be most familiar to all of us. So now we're just seeing the Arapaho and Roosevelt National Forest in the Pawnee National Grassland um, and seeing how that relates to where our recreation sites are. And of course, everything on the dashboard changes. This probably isn't mind blowing for those of you who are very familiar with ArcGIS Online. Um, it's pretty easy to whip up a dashboard uh, and show this kind of information. But uh, for a lot of folks uh, on the forest, it was very exciting stuff <laughs> to be able to see all these things in one place and, and scroll in on the map. So the last thing that I want to show you on this before I really dive into what we're actually talking about today in terms of social and environmental inequity right, is that I created a couple of uh, driving distance and drive time analyses. So this one that I'm turning on right now um, is driving distance of 50 miles from major cities. So that's basically all of the major suburbs of the Denver metro area, and of course, region-wide, uh, all, of, all of the major cities. So 
now that we're zoomed into this Arapaho Roosevelt National Forest area in the Denver metro area, we can see these purple polygons that are that driving distance of 50 miles from these major uh, suburbs. <clears throat> so that really gives us this extra look a little bit deeper into what that kind of reasonable day trip is going to be from the Denver metro area. So looking at those recreation sites specifically that are potentially highly impacted by these population centers that are close by. So again, just giving that little bit of extra information for our decision makers about where funding should go, where impacts are and all of that. So what I've shown you so far was kind of the initial ask uh, from our director of recreation about, hey, just give me a snapshot of what's happening in the region in terms of recreation, where are the sites, where are the concentrations, um, where are the people coming from, but we didn't want to stop there. Uh, we really also wanted to dig into these questions that we've been talking about today in these presentations about the social and environmental inequity. Um, so it's really not just about prioritizing our current users or upholding the status quo, as it were, but also, you know, better understanding the communities that we serve. Uh, and being able to visualize this on a map and understand where those intersections are happening. So with that, I am moving to a different tab in this tool. So it's another dashboard that looks very similar to the previous dashboard, of course, but this is showcasing a lot more information. Um, so the thing about this dashboard uh, as opposed to the last one, is that we are bringing in external data sets. So the first one that I showed you was 100% internal Forest Service data that we collect, that we maintain, and that's kind of, as an agency, what we're used to doing in a lot of ways. You know, we have our information and we use it to make our decisions, but uh, it's not as common to be bringing in external data sets, but especially with you know, our renewed focus that we're having as an agency um, and as a society too on these questions about, um, about equity and social and environmental inequity. Uh, we, we wanted to be bringing in extra information that we don't collect as an agency. So this map, you can see uh, we've got by county, we're showing the social vulnerability index from the CDC. Now, probably a lot of people might be familiar with this, but if you're not, uh, this is basically an index that is composed of 15 different um, indicators from the census. So 15 pieces of information from the census aggregated together. Um, and the CDC does this every, um, every year. I think they fold in some new information, but major updates, of course, are after every census is collected. Um, and so the CDC creates the social vulnerability index. So on the map, we're seeing the social vulnerability index by county based uh, on a color scale from kind of this yellow to the dark blue is the higher social vulnerability. And in the dashboard, we're also pulling out some of the key indices from, from within that social vulnerability index. So it's composed of things like this number of persons below poverty line in the county or percentage minority in the county or households with no vehicle access, um, potentially really useful for us in terms of knowing who can or can't access um, the, the, our forest service lands in adjacent counties. So right now we're just looking at this of course, in the entire region. So these numbers are, are for this whole region and a lot of these counties aren't necessarily very close, right, to, to our forests. So again, like I showed you earlier, we can filter down into a single forest and the counties will filter along with it. So basically what this is doing is filtering down all of the counties that are within 50 miles of the forest boundary. So now we're getting more direct information about um, about the makeup of these communities that are directly surrounding our forests, so the communities that we're serving. Right. 
The other thing that I really like to um, highlight here in this dashboard is that you know we have this external data from the CDC, from the census about the percentage minority in adjacent counties. So for the Arapaho Roosevelt National Forest, that's 30.6%. Um, is the, the makeup of those communities surrounding our forests. And then that is juxtaposed directly with our internal forest service data that uh, we collect on our visitation. Uh, specifically, and I know this is probably a small, so I'll read it for you, but this is showing the percentage of annual visitation by race and ethnicity. And that's data that we collect as the forest service. And you can see that there's a very large bar here. Um, and so, we have our white visitors, and that is 96.6% for the Arapaho and Roosevelt National Forest. So just juxtaposing that directly with uh, this information about the communities that surround us is very powerful. And, you know, this is information that we all know in the Forest Service. We know this. We know that there's a disconnect, but it's really powerful to be able to show it in a map um, and, and talk about it directly. So basically, Kind of getting to my wrap up here. Um, tools like this, even though they're pretty simple, <laughs> um, but being able to put together tools like this and use them effectively really is helping our decision makers better understand the communities we serve. And importantly, it's getting them to ask the right questions on how to better reach those that we're missing. Uh, I show people this, I show decision makers this in the Forest Service, and they want it to be a silver bullet to give them the, the solutions to these problems. But really, the wonderful thing is that it's getting them to ask the questions and it's getting them to see the blind spots much more clearly. So again, I want to um, emphasize that a dashboard like this, a set of dashboards like this, bringing in external data sets. Um, this isn't gonna seem groundbreaking to us GIS nerds, us people who are very uh, confident and well-versed in ArcGIS Online specifically as this repository of, of all of this information that we can pick up from different sources. Uh, but this tool really has opened a lot of eyes in my agency to what we can do and the tools that we have. Um, so as a direct result of this, GAOA, so again, that's the Great American Outdoors Act, funding decisions are now taking into account the social vulnerability index of communities around uh, proposed projects. So that was really impactful. Um, I'm really excited about it, especially as a relatively new career, early career GIS professional. Uh, it's exciting to be able to make those kinds of impacts in a very large agency. <laughs> so um, really awesome to, to kind of get the ball rolling on these conversations. And now we're increasingly having conversations and creating tools very much like this around um, climate equity is also becoming uh, a large conversation in, in our agency as well. So ultimately, to, to wrap up, I just want to emphasize that GIS, of course, allows us to better understand and illustrate where our blind spots are so that we can better direct our priorities and funding to, to address those blind spots uh, and to do what we can. And also, you know, by asking those questions that visualizations like this can bring up for people, we then can leverage the analysis and research that all of these other presenters are talking about today. So. With that, I would like to say thank you very much and happy GIS Day. And maybe we have time for questions. If we do, I'm happy to take them.